So we are going to go through a test. Um, I wouldn't say a test. We're going to go through a practice run of uh, kind of a layout for what we can do from ground command level all the way down to uh, squad lead level. So we're going to say that this town... We need to... Uh, Secure the town. And we'll say intact. So, goal is to capture this town intact. And we'll say we're deploying from up here to the north. So, as a ground command, what you're going to want to do then is first pick out a landing zone. Um, we can see that less than a kilometer to the west we have this town. And then it looks like we have some sort of scattered villages up to the north and then another scattered villages up to the north as well so whether it's modern or star wars or whatever for an insertion point it looks like this is on a hill right here we're looking at a little cliffside we're looking this little thing right here so we probably can fly in somewhat undetected into this little valley and then deploy from here and we can either then um, go try to find a way out up here or we can follow the road here and take that main road over there. Let's say um, this right here, we'll put our LZ, got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, let's go right around this curve right here in the valley. We'll mark this as LZ Jiggle. You guys love my names, don't you? So from LZ Jiggle, this is still the planning stage uh, for the GC. We will then proceed to follow this road, and then we will secure this little compound here, only about uh, 150 meters wide. So we will then secure the compound. What we can do is we can also have a uh, red team post up or a recon. See recon point one, recon point two alternate. And then if they can sneak up over here, this is covered area, we'll say recon point three. And that gives us three viable options to attack from and then recon you know we did a pri this will be the primary avenue of approach so we'll just call this alpha approach two peaks right there maybe it's not that looks like it's not spelled right doesn't matter call that alpha approach directly up the road and then we can call this right along this ridge line and assaulting from here. We'll call that Bravo approach. And then we can say the third option is to follow this and then assault from this side of the hill. We'll call that Charlie approach. All right, so this all planning right here is just to secure this compound so that we can then proceed forward with the, re with the rest of the objective. So that gives us three options approach. Once we get to LZ Jiggle, you can then send your recon squads up to any one of these points or any other that they find that might be better. It just gives you at least a brief overview. And then if you want to go out as a, in a three-pronged attack, you could say recon wants to take point two. They'll take Bravo approach. Then you have Alpha, um, maybe Green Team or Phantom, take Alpha approach while blue team or domino takes the far charlie approach and secure then you know assaults the compound secures it and then from there there's no more reinforcements that can hit it um you know where there you know we know reinforcements are going to come from here here and then we can secure from there hopefully if we take it out fast enough they won't get their comms in time however we are within one two three four hundred meters of the edge of town so let's assume they will probably hear that so what we can do is set up a secondary um, way of approaching and it looks like 
this might be the smoothest way up. So we'll say uh, once this is clear, the primary approach to Siena will be this way through the trees. We approach the edge of town. So we'll call this approach S1 to Siena uh, or Siano. And then we will call this approach through the edge of town S2. Now S2 leaves us with the secondary option of clearing out this whole area where the primary objective is just to secure this area. However, if reinforcements continue to pour from this area, we may want to approach this as a secondary objective anyways, so it just depends. So we can, let's go with the S1 approach. From here we can see as Crown Command that alright, we have two towns to the east that may be you know, many, uh, possible problems. What we can do is detach some of our units. We can go here and sneak them up. They're still within a couple hundred meters and there's forest cover right here. What we can do is say mine the road here. So that road will be mined so that any reinforcements that do come from here on the road will hit a good blockage. So they can do a first uh, anti-personnel mines mixed with anti-tank mines to hit any vehicles and infantry that come in this let's say 100 meter square. <clears throat> Excuse me guys, sorry. Okay, so from here we've mined the road <clears throat> in our planning. So now we've cut off reinforcements this way and it looks like it's a long route to go around here from this town so that may be an eventual avenue of approach but we'll probably just want to look that for that way for reinforcements we may not have to sneak over there and mine it however from the north it seems we do have some outskirts of town to worry about so if we approach from S1 we then divide up the town into sectors natural sector is easily identifiable and it looks like right here whoops I just did a shift click We'll just call this on this side of the road one sector, and we'll curve that over here. And then we'll call this area sector one. And you may want to color this red, blue, green, something that's a little more of an outline. But that way when the uh, infantry approaches, they can see, okay, I see the intersection here. Everything to the south and east of this road is sector one. Easily identifiable, then you can assign recon, take sector one, all right? From here, looks like we have some rocks possibly right around this area. And looks like we have a, an easily identifiable um, courtyard with two buildings in it. So what we can do here then is we say, all right, crossroads, easy identifiable building. We'll go all the way over here, across this fence line, and connect down here, right there. So now we have sector two. Assigned. So then it's again easily ident identifiable. We say, okay, from this corner of the road, up to the uh, you know double building with the courtyard before the triple building not the triple double and then all the way east to that fence slash wall line sector two all right and then we can go say sector three right here there is a wall with rocks we have looks like a combined double building so it's a little bit more tough which is totally fine so sector three might be look at that's right entire rest of town we might just say sector three is a large sector it is everything over on the west side of, of the road on Siano. From here, we can then say, all right, you know, um, we'll go from there. And then we can look out and mark right here, sector four. 
And if you really wanted to be not as precise, you could probably combine sector two and sector four. Doesn't matter, just this is totally just an example right here. And then finally, let's look at the last sector right here is after that crossroads in that Y area. So what we're gonna do then is mark that as sector five. So now we have the town divided up in easily identifiable sectors. Make sure your teams are watching this and make sure they stay in their sector when they're clearing. That way they're not crossing into another, any other team's um, you know, point of clearing. And that way you don't get friendly fire. Everything stays organized. When you're actually in clearing the sectors, all right, so this is more for the squad leads. So squad leads, you want to go and keep your guys clearing intact when you're doing buildings. So what you're gonna do is We'll put this in uh, in group so we don't clog up. Change it to group. And that way we won't clog up the uh, the comms or the map on um, the entire team. So what we're gonna do is just double click, put a dot if it's clear. So if your team clears that building, then you or you can assign that to your squad members if you trust them enough. We'll mark that as clear. I would assume if you send a, uh, you know, a, a team of two to clear this building, just say clear your building. They should be able to see themselves on GPS, or if not, they should be able to know on the map where they're at. And then they mark each dot as the building is cleared. So that way, after you know 20, 30 minutes of clearing, you can then go back to side channel and mark sector one as clear. You can do a big X, you know, whatever you want. You can, you can figure that out or you can change and just put a different, you know, different marker and you can put boom, sector one clear. Then you can delete your other marker. And then now when ground command and other squad leads are asking how progress is, they can see on the map, boom, sector one is clear. From there, you can delete these little dots. If it annoys you, it would probably annoy me. So you can just delete these little dots in the group channel. And then you can move on and ground command can then assign your t uh, squad, hit the next uh, sector of town. Should be pretty easy to follow. Again, for organization's sake, you know, make sure everyone is sticking to their sector. You don't want someone saying, oh, I see a guy over here. Let me just go clear this building real fast. He's running by himself over here in this building. Meanwhile, you know, recon comes in here, guns blazing, sees him in a building and shoots him. So coordinate with other squads, but stick to your sectors. So move through, assign your sectors. Once they're clear, then let's say, all right, we have uh, an armored push to go and hit this area. So what we're gonna do is, we can keep these up if you want. We'll just say armor units are deployed here. We now have a handful of APCs and uh, let's say two tanks. So Phantom gets two tanks, um, Recon stays on foot, and Domino gets the two APCs. So what we're gonna do, a Recon gets, let's say a light uh, Humvee or something, Warthog Humvee. So if we're going to clear these, this area, it's going to be a little bit harder because they're more sparse. So what we can do is, uh, if we want to go for a full-on attack to this much larger area, and because it's a secondary objective, we don't have to go house clearing, what we can do is deploy, you say, Phantom. You have one tank on the right, one tank on the left of the road, and the APCs are in the center, and let's say there's two uh, you know, gun trucks in the front with recon. Recon will then move up, seeing if there's any fire, keeping at a steady pace. Don't go too fast because you want to make sure the enemies see you, if there is any. If they take fire, they can peel left, peel right together, separate, doesn't matter. But they can peel around out of the area of engagement. Maybe if you even shorter, they can just peel around, mark the target, say, all right, there's an enemy in this building. Tank support can then, if they're, as they're staying back with the APCs, move up either on the road on the side wherever they're designated and then they can fire on that building and clear it out once that threat's been clear recon then resumes their approach 
and tries to draw any fire, pulls back a little bit if needed to, they might be able to just reverse. APCs are in the rear. If they say, oh, we see a squad over in this area, recon can then either pull back, dismount, and engage, or they can pull back, use their gun trucks to fire, while blue team dismounts and engages. Green team can then follow in, you know, with one tank on the left, coming through, uh, you know, following the road, and then one tank peels left, one tank peels right, fires, engages, clears the area. Now, if you're in a vehicle, especially tank crewmen, let's say, make sure that you are follow or you're uh, being reasonably responsible. Um, I've seen a lot of just kind of you know running and gunning and you know flipping around and flipping your tanks and going ahead far ahead of the rest of everyone else. So when you're squad lead, let's say you are squad lead for Phantom, who has assigned these two tanks, you'll say, all right, we'll take the lead tank, and then what we're going to do is have uh, you know, gun truck, gun truck, tank, APC, APC, tank. So you're going to take the front tank, and then your gunner's going to take the rear tank. Just, we'll say whatever, you know, your other half of the fire team's going to take that rear tank. So from there, you're going to then give commands, and they're going to stay in a column if you want them to stay in a column. Um, and you want to let them know which side of the road to engage on. That way you're not both pulling off to one side and shooting each other on accident. So front tank will say peel off to the right, rear tank will peel off to the left, that way you guys can have two different lines of sight, and you're following the road that entire time, and you're lining up and giving them rally points. Especially, this is really, really good to do when you're doing long pushes through hundreds of you know, meters of territory like this, you will call out, okay, this is good, rally point one. Right, and then we can go and you'll push from here and you'll say all right this is rally point to the end of the road you know 400 meters away that's pretty pretty decent distance for clearing an area and then from here you can then push north and you'll say all right we'll egress north get the road here and then we can do a little serpentine clear the road back here and then we'll say rally point three And then from here, um, you may not want to get caught in the middle of all these, depending on what's going on. So we'll say we'll follow this road. This is only a short 200 meter one. So we'll just call this Rally Point 4. Easy one right there to follow. Make sure you don't get lost. Go right up the road again, and you can follow the road. Looks like this is not going to be promising for actually getting up there, plus we have to hit that. So we'll end on rally point four, and then we can dismount and leave the vehicles back on this road to provide fire support if needed um, from approaching them. Or you may say, okay, rally point three is great. Let's go and offer a rally point 3.5 right up here, right next to this building with the wall between this wall. Looks like it's right on the edge of that hill. Um, the top of the hill is you know, coming up over here. It's on the edge of that hill, um, right next to a main building, just, you know, 100 meters away from the road. That way your tanker can come out, okay, looks like I'm about 100 meters from the edge of the road to the northeast. I'm seeing the building with the wall. I'm at the rally point. You want to make sure that your teams are following every step of the way um, what you want them to do. Otherwise, as soon as they get out of control, especially in armor, we've seen that in, in you know, in Killsmith's Armory, We've seen them go out of control and run up on their own and get shot um, and destroyed. And then you need to go rescue them because they've bugged off to go check on the town up north. And now they're shot and there's hundreds, you know, 100 guys crawling now towards your location here. So this way, at least make whatever approach you want to. This is probably definitely not the best way to do it um, you know, for approaching these specific objectives. This is just an example of setting rally points, setting approach vectors. Um, and making sure that everything is done somewhat systematically so that it's organized so everyone can have fun. You know, obviously it's a lot less fun when there's, you know, 30 of us running and getting shot randomly and everyone's screaming over the radio. It's not as fun, we all know that. So make sure you guys are planning it out somewhat in advance and then obviously it's gonna go to crap. Uh, you know, your plans may not be followed um, to the letter, but at least everyone has a basic objective, you know, approaching up here, 
Rally point one is really hard, really heavy. Everyone's scattered, you know, to and fro. It's gonna be, a, you know, it's a mess. Then you finally take the rally point, but then this one's really harassing the rally point. You may go up here and take rally point three then. It doesn't matter, just be adaptive and make the plans and set those uh, location spots so everyone knows where to go and that your teams know exactly how to take an objective um, and, be, and, and be smart about it. So, thanks for coming to my great training. I know you guys enjoy it. Peace.